Now, Scotty Scheffler has hit out at the media, at pundits, at, I'm going to say, the golfing world, ahead of Royal Liverpool and his next major bid, Josh. Now, we've got the exact statement we're going to go through and we're going to share with you as this breaking news story here on Bat9 Films. But Josh, right, I want to go through Scotty Scheffler's, well, I'm going to say career, but actually what he's earned in his career is this season, really. Well, he's earned basically half of his career earnings this year. Yeah. So in the current year, he's earned $19 million. That's, so that's from the end of the FedEx last yeah, year. Yeah, so 2022-23 season, yeah. By the way, I forgot to mention. Open week. Open week. <laughs> Open hat, it is the 150th, but not managed to get to the merch tent. Not yet. We will be there, though, don't <laughs> worry. Um, yeah, so he's at 19 million this year. His total career earnings are just over 40 million. So that is unbelievable. And the way this guy plays golf is, ama A, amazing to watch, but B, he is a machine. He is in that category of putting himself way... We know he's world number one, but he is setting himself apart with the way that he plays, the way that he's, his mentality is, and how he is performing week in, week out. I mean, it makes you think, how can he even have a critic when the performances... I mean, every time I turn the TV on, he is like, let's say top 15 or better yeah. i mean if you're betting against him this week you are a stupid stupid person like he has got to be one of the favorites going into the 151st open championship now Absolutely. you also mentioned to me a stat which mm -hmm. i think about it this stat i mean the money's impressive right money's impressive yeah. but arguably the money's bigger because we have elevator events we have all these bigger events now the thing that honestly mind boggles me is is it his last 18 starts? Yep. So in his last 18 starts, he's finished tied 12th or better. Nice. That is just ridiculous. I mean, that's Tiger Woods territory, right? 100%. That 100% is like Tiger Woods territory in the sense of the consistency. Now, he yep. plays actually arguably way more than Tiger did in his pomp and when Tiger did in a season. Yeah. Um, I feel like he tees it up most weeks, especially when they have to in the elevator events and around this point of the season, he's obviously going to tee it up in the major. But I'm actually shocked how much he plays, and arguably that's added to how much money he's in as well. Yeah, and we we talk every week about how difficult golf is, how hard it is to go from winning one week and win the next week. Okay, he's only won twice this year, but he is consistently turning up to events and finishing uh, like top ten for the sake of it, top twelve. Mate, he's finishing inside the top twelve. <laughs> but do you know what I mean? Like he's he's literally turning up, and the rest everyone else is playing playing for one place less in that top 12 because he is almost guaranteed to be in there yeah. that is how good he is as a golfer now in recent weeks he has actually had a few critics and he thought you know what enough's enough he thought it's now time to nip this in the bud it's a major championship i don't need this distraction yeah. and as we go through this and what he says we want to know your opinion is he saying this to almost listen carefully to what i say here one fool himself in terms of not believe the hype? Or number two, is he like, okay, this is starting to affect me now. Stop going on with it. Okay, Josh, what exactly has he said? Now, this is an interview on the eve of the 151st Open Championship. Yeah. And just on that note, what do you think of Rory, by the way? I know this is another question, but it just came to mind. Rory refused to do an interview this week. And you know what? Good. Exactly. Good. Yeah. Before we go down that rabbit hole of going yes. down about Rory. Yes, that's a completely different video. <laughs> yeah, I just thought of it then. I was like, oh my God, yeah, I can't believe he's not done an interview because the, the questions that would have been asked would have all been live related. Yeah. But what has Scotty Sheffield said? So he's basically come out and said that most of what has happened is something that has to be created into a story. So for a while, it didn't really seem like there was much of a story behind the way he played golf. Which okay. there wasn't. Like, no. Like, you think back to end of last year to now, it's been the Scotty Scheffler procession. Yeah. Tita Green, I mean, everybody was commenting on his funky footwork, but since he changed caddy, I mean, yep. that has been the meaning that when he changed caddy, he won, f f I think, four starts and six. It's something ridiculous. Um, yeah. But everyone comments on his funky footwork. Mm -hmm. But I think that is his advantage is the fact that he isn't a natural swinger in the sense of perfect. No. Nope. He swings his swing. Exactly. He went on to say, I think I was viewed as probably a touch boring. I didn't really show much emotion and whatever else you could think of. Now, I completely agree, but Quick that's... Quick question, Josh. 
Would you be a boring golfer for 18 million? Whoa, would I? <laughs> I'd be a boring golfer no, for half of it. I would rather ball hunt every single week. <laughs> I would rather ball hunt and earn no money. <laughs> I mean, how can that even be a criticism? By the way, that's not the criticism. No, and, and this is the thing. It's He's basically saying they've had to try and find a story. And I agree. Like The guy is literally... In the in the most best way of saying this possible, a robot. He is a machine, and that is a compliment as as high as I can give because he's unwavering. He's unwavering. But he said, "I think I had back-to-back -back tournaments that I could have won where I put it poorly, and all of a sudden it became this thing where, like, I'll watch highlights of my round, and even the announcers, any time you step over a putt, it's like, well, this is the part of the game that he struggles with." And I agree, you did start to hear that. You start to hear people yeah. saying, oh, he's been missing these ports. That's, this we is where he's struggling. Scottish, didn't we? Yeah, we did. And uh, the thing is, when you're a player who's always on TV as well, your game's going to be scrutinised. But equally, right? I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rip a commentator's here. Sometimes the commentators say things flippantly just to say something about a player. Like, I bet you his putting stats aren't that bad. Or well, you're going to tell me otherwise. We will get on to that because he actually <laughs> he actually went on to say that every time you guys see me miss a 12-footer, it's like, oh, there it is again. He's struggling. But it's one of those deals where I don't pay attention to it. The things that I'm working on right now, I feel really excited and I'm hitting a lot of good puts. Now, if we look at the stats, it doesn't necessarily say that. So Am I, uh, am I, am I just about to eat my own words? No, you're not because actually he is... In T to green, yeah. he's one of the best okay. on tour. On the green and strokes gained, he's 137th. That's really bad. Really bad. I mean, if you think only 150 guys tee up week in, week out, or maybe yep. just less than that, like, wait, what? And he's still finishing inside. How good are you, T to green? Well, exactly. This guy is an absolute machine. And I just think I agree with what he's saying, but I also agree that he has had putting woes, as it were. Mm. Has he been struggling? Absolutely not. Like, because arguably, well, arguably he has. Arguably like, he has. I mean, arguably he could have won every event but if I mean, his putting was better. The mad thing is, if his putting stats were even if he was inside the top 50, yeah. I think he would have cleaned up even more. Yeah. So, okay. So, I'm going to ask you the question. He's basically saying they're making a mountain out of a molehill. Yeah. There's not really anything. Stats do not back this up. I asked these guys that question. But what do you think? Is it him trying to nip it in the bud yes or is it him trying to say this is not a thing to almost fool himself because golf one of them sports sometimes if you start reading these things and start seeing these things or hearing these things about your game you then start believing it i mean sometimes i say to you mate don't slice it and what do you do yeah exactly and that's exactly what i was going to say how many times have i know i'm very different scott Sheffer. Yeah, very different the same height well yeah it's probably the, probably the only <laughs> thing to say um I, how many times have we spoke about it and said that putting is a confidence thing? Mm. Okay, so he knows that he steps on a tee box and he's going to get from tee to green absolutely fine, no problem. He's, he's the best in the world at it. In fact, his strokes gained tee to green average is 2.81 strokes gained tee to green. So he, he knows that's fine. Now everyone's telling him, everyone's talking, oh, he can't put, he can't put, he can't put. Putting is such a confidence thing mm. where actually he can put because he's finishing tied 12th or higher every week. So he can put and all he's doing, I agree, he's nipping it in the bud and he's almost telling himself, we don't need this, don't listen to this, you're fine. I also think when you're so good tee to green, the commentators have more chance to scrutinise that. 100%. Because you're hitting the greens more, so mm. therefore you're not going to hit it that close every single time. No. Therefore, you're going to have more of that 12-foot range. Whereas if you're missing a few greens, chipping it, the commentators don't almost have a chance of saying, okay, right, yeah, he's not, not, got, not got this put again. Yeah. So, Open Championship this week, he feels like he's nipped it in the bud. He's not making it a big thing. Does he have a chance to win? Are Absolutely. you picking him this week? Like, I'm going to say right now, I've said this from the start of this week, I don't think he's going to win this week. No. I know I know it sounds like a, a mad thing to say, but I just still think I have to agree with the commentators. I think sometimes they are a little bit harsh and they're very, very quick, even when a player is very good. I mean, look at Rory over the years. He can't pitch it. I mean, how yep. many times have we said Rory struggled with his putting as well? Yep. So yep. he's sort of going down that same sort of avenue. 
But I still think he's not going to win this week. I think he does have put in woes. I think he's in a bit of a, a low point. I mean, stats tell us there yep, that they are. I mean, I'm eating my own words here, but those stats, you, you can't lie about them. They do. But what I, my argument to that would be, well, if he's... The more greens he hits, the more chance he's got of winning. And he's hitting an awful lot of greens. If he's hitting it close... Do you know what I mean? Which, which arguably, if he's that low in in putting, you could arguably say that he must be to, when he's winning these events. Okay, his putter's got to be hot, but he's also hitting the ball mightily close to the hole because mm-hmm. he's not making big putts. Yeah, yeah. So, if his game can be as good as it we know it can be from tee to green, I don't see any reason why he can't win it. Do I think he wins it? No. Who do you think wins it? I think Roy McIlroy wins it. Second. You mean outsider? Uh, I'd say Ricky Fowler. Okay, so you're going Roy Ricky. I'm going to go... I, I totally agree. I think Roy's going to get it done. Yeah. And I think outside it, I'm going to go with Till Hatton. I like it. Okay. Now, one thing I would say, one that Scottish Shepherd's got in his favour this this week, is that obviously when you're putting on the PJ Tour week in, week out, you're basically putting on like perfect services. Yeah. Wind doesn't really get involved. This week, if the wind gets up, we saw it at the Scottish last week. I mean, Tom Kim on the last. Yep. Um, is it Tom? Yeah, yeah, what's on? Yeah. On the last where the ball was moving. That will affect your putt. The greens notoriously on Lynx golf courses aren't 100% pure. It's a bit more rustic. It's a bit more mm-hmm. rugged. It's a bit more natural kind of golf. So, I mean, that might help him. Take a little bit of a bubble in there, bubble out there. But for sure, I think it's interesting. It's the first time we've heard Scotty Scheffler really bite back at critics because potentially it's the first time he has ever had them. Josh? Equally, though, equally, just before, you have to remember, this is Scotty Scheffler we're talking about. Golf is a mental game. He is world number one. And guys are going to be looking at him thinking, I've got to beat him this week to win this mm. event. So, oh, so you, yours almost going down the avenue of... 100%. Every, every time he pegs it up, every time he pegs it up, people are thinking, well, he's almost guaranteed top 10. I've got to beat him to win. I just can't believe how bad his putting stats are. I mean, it is... it is When you look at how well he's performed, the money he's earned, the finishes he's had, it's mad. But think the one thing I would say, and you almost alluded to it before, think how much he would have won. If he's putting his back. So he's bad, won two times this year. He's won twice this year and basically finished top 10 the rest of the time. Well, let's just allude to if, if he had a top, let's say, even if he improved it by 50 spots, he's putting. How many tournaments checking he would have won? Oh, at least a handful. At least. Five, six? Well, it, what, he, he's missed out by a couple of shots, hasn't it? Like, Scottish Open, he was a couple of shots. It's not really been big margins. So, Maybe. arguably, you'd say fa- at least five or six. At least. Like, the guy's a joke. He's a monster. And that's what I mean. Guys will be looking at him thinking, well, if I'm going to win it this week, I've got to beat him. Mm. And he's stood there on the range, shelling balls. Not in any putts, but... <laughs> I mean, I... <laughs> <laughs> Great on the range. <laughs> Don't watch for the putting in there. <laughs> Scotty Shepherd's putting. Yeah. Okay. I was quite flippant to sort of. I mean, I, I think I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna give you credit here, Josh. Um, I remember I'm gonna say about six months ago. Yeah. You said Scotty Scheffler could compete with Tiger stats. I'm gonna say, Josh. Uh, I think if he sorts his putting out, I think he sort of is in that sort of similar category right right now. I'm not comparing money because of different eras. Yeah, Tiger was 100%. a slightly different era. But I mean, impressive. Top 12, he's not finished outside top 12 in his last like 16, maybe 18, 18 events. 18 events. Um, that is literally in Tiger Woods territory. Yeah. And I want to know, guys, you watching right here, do you think he is in the realms of Tiger? Could anybody actually even compete with the likes of Tiger? I'm going to say, I think, I, I think we're potentially looking at it and I think he will pass, surpass... Roy McIlroy, don't forget, Roy's only oh, yeah. won four majors. Yeah, and this is the thing, and, and, and what we're sort of alluding to here as well is that maybe he won't get the same number of wins, maybe he won't get the same number of majors as Tiger, but the stats that he is creating, like this, the stat around finishing tied 12 or more, if I said to you or to you watching, who's this? You'd think, it's Tiger Woods looking to start that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of thing, like that's the kind of player that he is. Tiger Woods was a machine and an absolute monster. He won everything. He can A, win everything if he wants to and if he gets everything dialed in, but he is going to create stats where people look at him and think, blimey. Yeah. Wow. That's the kind of player he is. 
I 100% agree. Guys, thanks so much for watching today's breaking news story here on Bat9 Films. We are on the eve of the Open Championship, and we can't wait to bring you some more breaking news stories. Don't forget, if you do subscribe, turn on that bell button right next to the subscribe button, because you never know when we're going to release a breaking news story just like this.